You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to the Clock Cleaners Podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we'll be recapping SmackDown from May 16th. Yes. So, wasn't an overall great show. It wasn't a bad show. But yeah. it wasn't, it was, I don't know, I thought it could have been a little better for a go-home show. Yeah, it was kind of boring. But yeah, for me, it dra- dragged a lot. Yeah, you said that. I mean, I didn't feel like it dragged, but I feel like it... Didn't have many high spots. No. Like, I mean, I, I was looking forward to it when it was previewed on Raw, like when they ma- announced the two matches, oh, AJ yeah. versus Jinder and uh, Corbin versus Orton. Yeah. So It should but, have been good. But yeah. And not that it was bad. I just I wasn't really into it too much. Yeah. It was, <clears throat> it was kind of... Eh. Um... I guess a uh, status quo SmackDown. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Not not a whole lot of like development. But then again, you can't really add development before a pay per view. Yeah. So. Well, I think every after this pay per view, then it'll start kicking in gear. Yeah. I mean, I think the whole uh, Shinsuke thing has kind of kept everything in limbo for a little while. Well, yeah, because that's kind of frustrating because it's not really. It's not leading to anything mysterious. It's, right. It's leading to the inevitable ass kicking that Dolph's going to be Well, facing. yeah, that's true. So that's really the whole thing with yeah. that. <clears throat> that um, and the women's division isn't doing anything. Yeah, so I think that something will happen during the pay-per-view. Yeah, well, it seems inevitable. Yeah. But uh, anyway, we open the show with uh, Kevin Owens' highlight reel. He's a thief. He yes. stole Jericho's TV. Mm-hmm. The Jerichon was at 6,500. 6, yeah. <clears throat> so uh, he comes out and is going on about nonsense as usual. Yeah, he was um, talking about how he um, retired Jericho yes. and he's going to do the same thing to AJ Styles. Yeah, so we got clips of... The last match they had on SmackDown before uh, Jericho's absence, Mm -hmm. a.k.a. his tour with Fozzie. Um, So then uh, AJ comes out and says, you know, Owens has been stealing Jericho's thunder for the last year. Mm -hmm. Kind of hanging on his coattails, I guess. Um, Now, especially with the uh, highlight reel. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. he literally stole the show. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And then Owens tells him that Anything AJ do, AJ can do. I can, I can do, do better. better. Yeah. Um, so I think at this point, uh, Jinder comes out, who is apparently supposed to be Kevin Owens' guest. Yeah. He's like, hold on, I'm supposed to be the yeah. guest of the highlight Which, reel. That would have put asses in the seats. It's true. <laughs> and then, and then, he just he's, he said that I was supposed to be in, answering questions about my match. Uh, yeah. At, at, at backlash, backlash, and then he starts talking about it, even though no one asked him. It's true. Uh, well, I think he. Started going on in Punjabi about it, right? Mm. And then uh, earlier, was it earlier where Owens was talking in French? Yeah, that's when he was interrupted by AJ. Yeah, yeah, he was. He was, uh, I guess, making fun of the fans in French. Yeah, because he can. Where were they? New Hampshire, I think, last night. Mm, I maybe? think so. Yeah, it was somewhere in the Northeast. Yeah, because they made a, uh, what was it a, Super Troopers joke? Because huh. they were talking about. The fashion police when they were cutting to that. Oh, okay. They said that we're not in Vermont, but we're in New Hampshire, which is close enough or something like that. <laughs> it sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. Um. So AJ tells Jinder that he shouldn't worry about Sunday, but to worry about tonight. Yeah, because they had a match later yes. on. Yes. Which, uh, but apparently AJ wanted to uh, fight right now. So uh, went to commercial break and then came back and we had AJ versus Jinder Mahal. It's true. So Kevin Owens was on commentary, which apparently that's his thing now. I was just like three weeks in a row or something like well, that. Well, he's not going to wrestle. Well, no, it wasn't three weeks in a no, row. No, he was in the six-man last yeah, week, yes. Yeah, he was yes. in a match last so week. So it was the week before yeah. that and this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, so uh, Jinder actually controlled a good portion of the match, being the more dominant of the two. Well, it's like well, twice AJ's size. It's true. Um, yeah, he's probably got to be 6'5", six, 6'4", six, something, something like that. Like that. He he's really towers tall. over the Bollywood boys. Well, yeah. But, but that's not they're surprised. not very big anyway, so. Sure. <laughs> um, but uh, Jinder actually uh, won the match. Yeah, but that was not not without lack of help. No, but uh, this was number one contender for the world versus number one contender for the U.S. Yeah. So uh, 
but uh, AJ was getting gaining momentum in the match, and uh, he went to the outside he to probably going for set up for the yeah phenomenal forearm. And uh, one of the Bollywood boys, Singh Brothers, whatever you want to call them, got up on the apron. So the referee walked over to to him, and at this point, Kevin Owens got up from the commentary booth and uh, hit AJ in like the leg yeah, with I guess the belt, the, the back of the leg, yeah, or whatever. something like that. He was selling a knee injury mm-hmm. after that. So then AJ rolled back in the ring, and Jinder hit him with the uh, Cobra Clutch Slam for the win. They they called it something else. They they came up with the name with it, I guess, oh, uh, for they? it. I cannot remember what it is, but I guess they changed it. Yeah, from it was whatever. like a sing singular word. Oh, so he actually named the move. Yeah. for him. I gotcha. So I cannot remember what it was, but I'm pretty sure that they came up with the day. Yeah. <laughs> whatever. Um, after that. Um, was the segment that we were referring yeah. to before. But uh, anyway, before I was just going to go on a little uh, about the match. Uh, Since, you know, it's kind of a significant match. Not really, but... No, nothing I mean, of significant has happened. No, but Jinder actually got a win over a high-caliber Well, wrestler. yeah, they, they're obviously trying to make Jinder, Jinder look strong. Right. But, um, so. I mean, AJ worked pretty well with him because yeah. he was able to, you know lead the match mm-hmm. like he always does mm-hmm. well that's so, AJ's thing yeah I mean I had a little uh, hesitation on I didn't want this to turn into a Finn Balor incident again not that he necessarily was concussed because he oh, turned oh, oh, yeah. oh okay I was just, you mean when yeah, it was he, in the back of my mind yeah, I mean when gender punched him in the yeah, head yeah clothesline him or something yeah. yeah so I guess that makes sense well but he, AJ is such a good worker so yeah he knows best in doing. the world knows what he's doing it's true um, but yeah, anyway, as you were yeah, saying, um, they, they made that weird segue into the fashion files. Mm-hmm. Um, this time they, uh, it opened, w- well, it panned over to Fandango. Yeah, it was, they were in like a, uh, I guess it's like a storage closet almost. No, they were like in a, well, I guess it was, yeah. but it was like their office. Yeah. So. It had all kinds of pictures on the wall bef- and stuff Before like we go into it, I, uh, earlier I paused when uh i i rewatched this segment uh-huh. and i was just reading all the stuff on the wall there was a picture of james ellsworth and it said chin with the question mark and it said uh friend zone underneath it <laughs> seems fair yeah there was a lot of good things they put in there yeah a lot of little subtle jokes yeah that you exactly. won't really be able to pick up or mm-hmm. at least not all of them yep shinsuke no style <laughs> um uh, yeah a lot of uso stuff and you know yeah so guy. um <laughs> He he was like reading something. Uh oh no, was that when he came up with the Baron Corbin thing? No, no, no uh Breeze came through the ri- uh the room. Well, he and came, yeah, he came into the room dressed as the janitor. janitor. He had like a bald wig on and a fake <laughs> mustache. Yeah, and Fandango was going on that he wished his partner was here and then yeah. Breeze was like, What if he is? And he's like, Oh my god <laughs> Yes, audibly surprised about yes. What happened, even though the disguise was terrible. Oh, yeah, but that's the whole point of it. So uh, I guess he was going undercover as a janitor to retrieve fashion felonies throughout the locker room. Oh, and that's when he found... Yeah, so he had three items that he found. One was Baron Corbin's T-shirts, and he said, he's got three T-shirts, all wolves. Um, And then they had uh, Sammy's pants. Oh, yeah, it was uh, the same color as something else. His credenza. Oh. Yeah. And yeah. then they had the uh, Usos day one is H <laughs> instead yeah. of day one ish shirts. Um, so apparently Breeze, I guess, got too involved with going undercover and kind of started freaking out. <laughs> so uh, Fandango kind of calmed him down, and uh, they exclaimed that Sunday when they win the titles, their day will be H. <laughs> what does that mean? Do you know day one ish? Yeah. I I guess it's like everything's so easy for them. It's just day one shit, you know. Like I I, I guess I don't know. I don't know. I, I I'm never not really understood the, it. The felons. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> um. So yeah, I wasn't wasn't really. I'm still not sure what the hell that means, but it's still a funny segment. Oh yeah, it's it's, it's the, great. the fashion I, files whole yeah. thing has been very good. Which is funny because the last two weeks in a row they got two segments. They had a match and yeah. So I I would assume they're. Uh, Kind of trying to build them up for something. I would just, you would think so. Yeah. Because, like, why would you give them that TV time? Unless they're just trying to make it so that the tag division has, has some sort of spotlight. Yeah. Yeah. 
which is possible. Yeah. Like, they literally haven't done anything with the tag teams. No. American Alpha hasn't all. been on TV since that mm, match yeah. with the Cologne. At least, yeah, three weeks or so, right? Yeah. So, but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, next was a backstage interview with Orton. Yeah. Where I guess it was just Renee Young asking him what his thoughts were on gender. Yeah. Kind of. And then. I'm not concerned. <laughs> yeah. Orton was just saying that Jinder kind of goes around and saying the fans don't like me, be, don't like him because he's different. Yeah. But uh, Randy basically said, no, they don't like you because you're an ass. Which is pretty funny, yeah. actually. Because uh, it's not very often that you have black and white things like that being oh, said. Yeah. yeah. It's like, oh, there's got to be a reason behind right. everything, not just nope. because of who you are. Yep. Which is certainly a different way of wrestling to go about it. Yeah. So, um, so this up next was weird. Because uh, Breezango is coming out to the ring, and then they didn't make mention of them being in a match or anything. Mm. And then all of a sudden, you cut to commercial, and you come back, and they're already fighting the clones in the ring. Well, yeah, I, I thought that was weird. I thought yeah. I actually missed something. Yeah, that's what I thought, too. And then I was like, oh, I guess they're... I mean, I kind of figured they I, were wrestling, I, I, but... I knew they had a match. I thought they said something earlier. Oh, did they? I, I could have sworn they said something earlier, but... I, I thought I missed something when they cut back to commercial no, and they were already it in the match. just cut back, yeah, and they yeah. were wrestling. So that was right probably just bad odd. timing on ter- in yeah. terms of their... Which, um, speaking, did you hear what they're planning on doing with SmackDown? What? They're actually going to do, I believe they did it during the wild card finals, where they had the picture-in-picture picture during the commercials. Uh-huh. So you're actually going to be able to watch the match during the commercials. Oh, like yeah. on... Mm-hmm. Huh. On the TV, I guess uh, WWE and USA were talking with the sponsors and stuff like that. I was going like to say, that. I'm sure USA doesn't care because they probably get so much money from well, advertisers. Yeah, and I think part of it, I guess they want them, the people to watch it live, so this way you actually get more. Yeah. There's, I guess during the Hulu version, they would cut all that out. Well, obviously, because <coughs> you can't. Because yeah. there's no commercials. Right. Uh, see, I, I don't think I watched that one live, so I didn't know about that. What? Oh. The, the wild card finals. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. I believe it was that one. I remember there was uh, an episode where they did try it. Yeah. Well, that's not a bad thing. No, I'm I'm it, fine with that. It gives you, like, I guess, not an incentive to watch, but it's like Some, another perk that yeah. SmackDown has. Yeah. Well, that's cool. No. <laughs> Unfortunately, that'll take away from, you know, going to the bathroom and getting food during breaks. Well... How often do things happen during the commercial break anyway? Oh, I know. So but it's not like it takes away from no, it. No. It just gives you something to watch while you're... That's true. Sure. That's true. Um, anyway, the it, this oh, match kind of yeah. ended as expected. Yeah, it was a very quick match. Yeah. Because um, uh, the, yeah. just the way they've been booking them, they've been steamrolling all mm-hmm. the other tag teams. Which, uh, yeah, Fandango ended up getting the win over one of the clones with a uh, Falcon Arrow, which is uh, odd because that move usually doesn't win matches. It's true. <laughs> um, but I, I keep on forgetting to mention this, mm. but the last two weeks, uh, Rollins had done it on Samoa Joe and on Bray Wyatt. Mm-hmm. And it's so funny because they're too big for him. Oh, so, so he needs to like have them pull their or lift their legs. Mm-hmm. So what he's doing is after he hits the move and goes for the pin, he's supposed to reach for the leg. Right. But he you can see him struggling oh, so to they have reach to bring it. their leg back up. So there. you can you watch them lift their leg <laughs> and then he grabs onto it after yeah, it's lifted. It, it's tough with smaller guys doing moves. It's like watching AJ do the Styles Clash on somebody that's much bigger than him. Yeah. It's it's just kind of awkward. Mm-hmm. Like when he was doing it to Dean and stuff. Yeah. Well, pretty much everybody's taller than him. Pretty much. So that's why, like, when he was in the X Division in uh, TNA, mm. he was better off because he was fighting people his size. Right. But, I mean, he's so good that you oh, can't yeah, just he... limit him to something well, like exactly. that. Well, yeah. exactly. I'm not saying that it was an appropriate Which place for him to be. The X Division was a very odd place in TNA because uh, Samoa Joe was an X Division champion as well. Oh. Yeah, it wasn't really a weight limit thing. It well, was I more didn't think it would no, be a weight No, no, it was limit, just but... that's how it was kind of perceived in the beginning because oh. it was generally the smaller guys. Yeah. Um, well, it's kind of like it was like the cruiserweights, kind of, yeah. right? Yeah, basically, but with style, guess, not yeah. necessarily mm-hmm. size. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, after Brizango <laughs> wins, the Usos come out for uh, one of their promos again, mm-hmm. which uh, this one was a little less cringeworthy, in my opinion, than last week. Yeah, it was not as bad as the one as mm-hmm. last week, but no. it wasn't great. But yeah, they were uh, saying that this isn't 
Brizongo's precinct, but it's the Usos Penitentiary. Yeah, this is a weird. And they're gonna take him to trial. Yeah, this is a weird way to do this because, mm. like, yeah, I get it. They're supposed to be police, but it's not a good idea to have your superstars be represented as criminals. <laughs> so, <laughs> I. They dress the part. It's true, and that's kind of we probably haven't said it during any of our recaps but we've been joking that that that's basically their gimmick now it's, true. it's, it's just being criminals criminals yes so <laughs> well i mean they're not crime time but you know well yeah but that was a uh, really bad <laughs> oh wwe it's true it's like oh we got two black guys let's let's make them let's put yeah. them together and make mm-hmm. them crime time yep they the gimmick was kind of funny though i wasn't really watching during yeah. that time. Well, I just caught like bits and pieces and it's just like cartoonish like yeah, robbery kind of esque yeah, thing. Which I think one of them wrote a book, right? Or was it Shade or JTG? Whatever. I have no idea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Um <laughs> so up next we had the six woman tag contract signing yes. for Backlash, which so, we obviously needed this. Let's have a contract signing for a match that doesn't matter. Pretty much. I mean <laughs> It's obviously building to something, so it's going to matter at, at somewhat. Yeah. Which I would assume one of the three faces is going to turn heel. Yeah. Which is probably going to be Charlotte, because I think they're not happy with the way her being perceived as a baby face is. Well, it doesn't help that they did nothing. To, yeah. yeah. I mean, she doesn't. She shouldn't be a face, to be honest. I, I guess. mean, she plays a heel so she much better. She's a very better. good heel. Yeah. Which is funny, because she's like one of the nicest people. Well, I mean, that's generally how it is. I guess so. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, <laughs> basically what happened was they, everyone came out, Natalia had a speech about something, Yeah. and then all the heels signed, right. <clears throat> and then it and was Becky the fr- took the mic first and yeah. kind of cut a promo on them, and then Charlotte took the mic and, and cut a promo Naomi on them, and too. then Naomi as well. <laughs> and then... After it all was signed... <laughs> Ellsworth grabbed the mic and he said, "Don't worry, Shane, I got this." Or something like this. Yeah. <laughs> and then he basically cut a promo on all the face women, saying that he was out of their league. Yes, and in, he was in not interested. I'm yes. sorry. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Naomi ended up pushing Ellsworth, and then Carmella like took Naomi's head and smashed it on the table, mm. and then uh, I guess they kind of got separated. Yeah, well, I think Charlotte oh, Shane... grabbed Naomi again. Oh, did? Yeah. Yeah, and Shane probably stopped Carmella mm. or whatever. Yeah, and then so Shane decided, he was like, you guys want to fight? You're going to have a match. So we're going to get Naomi versus Carmella. Mm-hmm. In a non-title match. Yes. To be clear. Um. So this was, it wasn't a bad match. Yeah, it, wasn't it wasn't terrible. It's just Carmella doesn't wrestle the same style. She's not up to yeah, she's Naomi's not speed. Good. With the, they did their back and forth thing with the kicks again, like they did what two weeks ago. Or? Yeah, it's it, not terrible, but it it makes Carmella look bad because she the way she, she takes yeah. offense, she makes her look like she's like whining, just like when she takes the kicks and goes like this yeah. or something like that. Yeah. It's 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 a little so odd. it makes her look weak. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> anyway the the match ended after I think it was um well Tamina got up on the apron. And well, Ellsworth got kicked out first. Oh yeah, he got ejected, yes. and then uh, Charlotte and Becky were like, "Bye." Yeah. So I guess Tamina got up on the apron, and uh, then she got kicked then, out. No, too, they, right? she uh, the ref kicked her and, and Natalia, and Natalia out. out, and they were yep. on their way out. So they were walking to the back, and then Becky and Charlotte were kind of following behind them, kind of just making sure they went to the back. Yeah. So I guess they turned back around to face what was going on in the ring, mm-hmm. and then Natty and uh, Tamina came running back down and uh, blindsided uh, Becky and Charlotte. Mm-hmm. And at this point, Naomi was getting distracted in the ring, so Tamina was, I guess, I guess they had knocked uh, Becky and Charlotte yeah, down. Yeah, I would assume and so. And Tamina was faced uh, away from the ring, and Becky, kind of, I mean, uh, Naomi do- like kind of kicked her through the ropes, gave her like a drop kick oh, through yeah, the bottom yeah, yeah. rope. Yeah. And then she turned around and got rolled up by Carmella for mm. the three count. Which is the only way that Carmella is going to beat anybody. Yes, which I believe the heels won all three. Probably. Matches. I think so. Yeah. I know that they won the tag match a couple mm-hmm. weeks ago. I don't think... Was there an actual match that happened last week? Um, Something happened. Yeah, I don't remember if it got thrown out or not, though. Yeah. Either way. Yeah. Um. 
they're building towards something. Yeah, that, it's hard to I tell. Know. Yeah. You kind of like, because it seemed as if Becky was going to turn heel because they, they were getting, the welcoming committee was trying to get them to, or get her to join them or whatever. Right. And I don't know. It just, it seems like this is a weird booking decision because it's the weakest three against the strongest right. three. I don't so, know if I mean it's it's yeah it's just an odd split. Like if you looked at it on paper, you're like, oh wow, this is just gonna be a complete squash. Mm-hmm. But who knows? Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, up next was uh, Dolphin, the back backstage or whatever. Yeah, he was in, hanging like, out in the locker room. room yeah, and uh, <laughs> he said that I'm I'm not I'm not convinced about why Shinsuke is so great. Mm-hmm. So he wanted to look up what was it on the WWE Network? Or uh, whatever, no, I or? guess he had a tape of all of Shinsuke's greatest yeah, it was moments in WWE. Yeah, and it, it played the tape and it said footage not found. Yeah. So then, uh, you know, Dolph basically said that uh, Shinsuke has done nothing in the WWE, but he's done everything. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of have a highlight package of him winning belts throughout the years. Oh, you're talking? You mean Dolph? Yeah, Dolph. Yeah. yeah. They showed it like. Uh, uh, like you said, uh, like a montage right. of all his big victories. Yeah. So uh, basically, Ziggler says he'll uh, spit in the face of his critics, and uh, when he wins, when he wins at that backlash. backlash. So yeah, there's that. Sure, that's hopefully the last uh, yeah time it, we have to see this. It should be hopefully because yeah. you would. It's hard to assume that they're gonna keep. These two that, together, yeah, yeah, just because of the way so. that this has gone, yeah, because there's no real reason. Because if Shinsuke wins, then it kind of just proved Dolph wrong, and that's the end of it, right? And if Dolph wins, what does Shinsuke care? Yeah, you right. know what I mean. Nah, I guess he's so. not tr- he's not actively trying to prove anything. Right. Yeah, he's just there while and Dolph is. We're all just waiting for Shinsuke's first match. That's you know? basically what this is. Yep. So, I mean, you, you can't just give this away for free. Got to have it on pay-per-view. Apparently. Just nine ninety nine a month. It's true. They don't and push you, that as much as they used you'll to. You'll also get extreme rules if you sign up for your first round now, though. There you go. Yeah, they said that last night. Yeah. They don't They don't advo- advocate for the uh, network as much as they used to. Oh, my God. It used but, to be so bad. But they still do. It's just, like I said, yeah. not, not down your throat as much as there was. But, I think now they realize that they're kind of peaking on... Absolutely, yeah. So, because I mean, it, when it, you think about it, it's such a good deal. Yeah, because if you're gonna get it, you probably have it. Right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, because I mean, I'm sure, like, I, it's been mentioned that they have spikes during, you know, the big four. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, because then you just get right. the free trial. Yeah, yeah, right. Or you or just spend do the, the ten dollars, yeah. yeah, and split it between a couple people, and exactly. that's it. Yeah, I remember doing that as a kid with. With, with pay-per-views, pay-per-views, yeah, and it was, it was still also crazy. a lot more expensive. Like fifty bucks yeah, at now least. It's Ten dollars for yeah. You could potentially get two pay-per-views. Right. Yes. So, but uh, <clears throat> yeah. So uh, up next, we had an interview with uh, Sami Zayn in the back. Uh, apparently, I guess he asked Shane for a match. Um, yeah, with, with Corbin. Baron Corbin, which uh, we forgot to mention on uh, Raw, where Angle was in the back and he was on the phone with Sammy, wasn't he? Didn't he say uh, something about? I could have sworn he mentioned Sammy's name. Um, during when the Miz came up, he was on oh, the phone. That? It could have been that. I didn't remember hearing yeah, him saying I think he, he said, was on the phone. All right, let me talk something. to you later, Sammy. I'll call you back. Like he. Okay. Yeah. It's it's possible that yeah. I just missed that. Right. But I I know that dur- it was during the Miz segment. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, I just yeah, I just remembered it because because he interrupted him. I right. Didn't, I didn't realize he was on the phone with somebody. Yeah. Specific, I should say. Um, but anyway, Sammy goes on saying that he's a threat to Corbin's ego because he's a person that won't stay down. Yeah, well, um, because you know how Sammy yes. is. Yes. So uh, then uh, Corbin comes in and uh, attacks him. Attacks him, yep. And says that uh, if he doesn't stay down, he'll put him down permanently. Yeah, Baron so, Corbin's the Samoa Joe of SmackDown. It's true. Um, it's not quite as bad, but still. No. And uh, this led us into our main event, yeah. very Corbin sh- versus Orton. Very, very, very limited on the amount of things that happened on SmackDown yeah. this week. Yeah, there was really not much. But the matches took up a decent amount yeah, of time. Like, large... Well, that woman segment was long, too, it's because true. you had the signing and the match, which probably went on for a good 25 minutes. Total? Yeah, at least. Yeah, because the match itself wasn't that long. No. 
the second. But you probably had a set of probably two commercials. Yeah. I would assume during it. Yeah, and um, for the most part, every match was at least like three parts long. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because so, like the only, you had the the gender and the Styles match, which was long, which opened the show. Right. And this match that was long after which a segment. Show. Yeah. So it was probably a fifteen minute segment. It was with probably eight thirty by the time the match was over. Yeah. So that's usually what they do is they open and then they have a match, match right and, after. Yeah. And around the time the match ends is like eight thirty. Yeah. Um. So, but yeah, this was a rematch from what a couple weeks ago, I believe. It was a while ago. I don't think there was ever a match between the two of them. Yeah, yeah, because I, I, I said I, I, oh, I, en- yeah. I enjoyed the match between. This was the two a while ago, yeah. though. Was it a while ago? Yeah, it wasn't that recent. All right. Well, these two are big, though. They're just watching them together mm-hmm. in the ring. It's like, wow, yeah. these guys are huge. Well, it also, it, it Baron Corbin's really athletic, and it, yeah, he just doesn't really show it all no. that often. So, well, he was a former football player. Yeah. So. Um, Not really a surprise. Yeah. But yeah, he's really he's good with bigger mm-hmm. opponents. He's only been facing smaller guys. Randy Orton's the only one really of yeah. his size on SmackDown. Mm-hmm. So it was a good it was a good uh pairing. Right. And um I think I think Randy knows that, so Randy's gonna Yeah, he didn't look like he was bored. Mailing it in like he does with most matches. Yeah. I it, mean, he does the same old shit every time. Yeah. But uh but it it's looked vintage like, Randy Orton. It looked like he was more interested in mm-hmm. what was going yeah, on. Yeah, no, I would definitely agree with that. Um, and but yeah, this 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 match was like I said, very, very. It was pretty good. Yeah. With um, with like the back and forth with uh, yeah, Randy trying to keep Baron down, but Baron kept on being resilient. Mm-hmm. He must have slid out of the ring like three or four, two or three times, times at the end. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Orton threw Corbin into the corner, and Corbin slid out of the ring like he normally does, yeah. and uh, came back in and got nailed with an RKO. That was how. Yeah, that's how it ended. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. Um, I, 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 I thought that because uh, Gender and the Bollywood Boys came out. No, that was I after. Thought, yeah. I thought that was while the match was going on. Mm, as okay. soon as he got the three count, yeah. then the music he, hit. He went for a few RKO's. Like yeah. to start off the match right away. He oh yeah, went for but it. he always. And then that. Corbin kept taunting him every time he was down. He, yeah. I, I don't remember exactly what he was saying, but uh. Yeah, well, that's th- what Corbin does. Yeah, but they're doing really good with building up Corbin. Oh, Corbin's going to yeah. be big, this, or at least pretty big. I think this is the way they should have built Jinder up, rather than you mean slow burn. Yeah, it makes sense, but I think they were in a hurry. Well, yeah, right. I guess it was probably when they put him on SmackDown, it was probably a last-minute decision. Like, we need Randy to do something while uh, while everybody else is, uh, I guess, in this U.S. title feud. Are you suggesting that Jinder was just a placeholder? I, I think. Well, well I, besides what we talked about with him going forward in India and yeah, stuff Yeah, I was like going to say, I think that was first and right. foremost. I think that's why he went to SmackDown. That, yeah, because they were obviously building him up because he had matches like three or four weeks in a row yeah, on Raw with Balor, Reigns. Roman, Roman Reigns. And then I don't remember who else, but I don't maybe know it wasn't anybody. Of, it could have just been the two. It's true. But it was still surprising who he was facing. Yeah, yeah. Um. Anyway, I, I don't think, I think that this was the plan. And I think putting AJ with Owens was the yeah was the time holder i guess that makes sense because it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to have aj face orton well not now we're gonna eventually get that feud probably assuming that orton doesn't lose the title to somebody before then that's true because who knows where they're heading after this because assuming that orton holds on to the title is, is this going to be a prolonged feud? Yeah, because this doesn't know. seem like a prolonged yeah, fe- feud. Like I said, I think uh, Shinsuke is the wild card there. It's true, because he could... You can insert him into any feud, and it would be fine. And it doesn't matter what... If he's face or heel. Yeah. The he, only one we won't get is Shinsuke and AJ right now. Well, yeah, because that's, uh, that's a WrestleMania. That's, yeah, match. absolutely. Um, But, you know, whatever. But yeah, this one seems like a one-and-done just based off the fact that it literally looks like Jinder's throwing everything he's he got, has yeah. at Randy. They have him on every talking smack pretty uh-huh. much. They're kind of just, yeah. yeah. So, And you can't really, you really can't go with that kind of, I guess, gusto every single week right. for 
a prolonged yeah, period. Yeah, oh, that's true. Absolutely. Yeah, he's been wrestling almost every week mm-hmm. too. So, so. And it's not even so much that he can't do it. I just don't know how much right. yeah, the gonna audience be... is going to respond to that. Yeah, you just hope he doesn't flounder afterward. I think but he'll I, be fine. I think him in the U.S. title picture would be fine. Yeah. Well, the problem is, I don't think, I don't think anyone besides Owens is going to hold it for a while. No, but I just mean eventually. In that, yeah, yeah, it would yeah. be more appropriate. Yeah. So, and it would be, it would, they could do the same thing they're doing with Owens with him in the future. Yeah. In terms of like a a non-American holding the U.S. title. Right. So that would be it would yeah. be a good, but not just yet, yeah, obviously. Right. But um. But yeah, after after the match, like you said, Jinder's um, music hits. He comes down yeah, with he, the Bollywood Boys. Right. Well, he didn't come. In, he was getting into the ring, I think, and the Bollywood Boys came through the crowd and attacked Randy. Yeah. Randy fought them off, and then Jinder came in, and all three of them beat him down. Yeah, I was going to say, he very easily handed, handled oh, the yeah. Bollywood Boys. I think Boys. he was trying to do like a double suplex or a double DDT. No, he was going right? for, yeah, a double DDT yeah. from the double <laughs> draping DDT. Yes, yes that's and true. And then Jinder came from behind and hit him, and then the three of them... Uh, beat him down, and that's how the show ended. Yeah. So, so yeah, that was our uh, SmackDown review. So catch us next for our Backlash predictions video. Yeah. If you liked what you see here, please like, share, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.